In last week's lesson, we briefly discussed how symmetry produces complete balance in architecture. While it is true that the use of symmetry is the easiest way to achieve balance in design in general, there is also another method, asymmetry. Now you might be wondering, how could anything be balanced if it's asymmetrical? Let's take a closer look. First of all, what is asymmetry? Well, unlike its counterpart, asymmetrical structures don't have a vertical line of reflection. If they did, then one side of the building could be reflected across this line to produce an identical opposite side. But because asymmetrical structures don't reflect oneself, we have more or less an imagined line of asymmetry. So in what ways can balance be achieved by asymmetry? It is by the use of counterpoints. Counterpoints literally come in many different shapes and sizes as there are an infinite number of counterpoints in design. To narrow down which counterpoints work best in a certain design, the context has to be carefully considered. Let's look at a non-architectural example of balance through counterpoints. We'll start with our line of asymmetry right here in the middle. On the right hand side we have a circle and on the left hand side we have several boxes. We're going to dig a little deeper into this illustration to fully understand how these shapes interact with one another to produce balance. Let's first take a look at quantity. On the right hand side, we have just one shape. This one shape is counterpointed by several shapes on the left hand side. Again, on the right hand side is a circle this circle is counterpointed by boxes on the left. As far as the size of the circle on the right, it is fairly large in comparison to its counterpoints on the left hand side, which are fairly small boxes. The circle on the right has complete blank space on the inside. This void is counterpointed by the solidity of the several boxes on the left hand side. As you can see in this drawing, these shapes, although not being equal, still produce a sense of balance because they are counterpoints of each other. Now this drawing is a very, very basic form of asymmetry. Obviously when it comes to actual architecture, counterpoints will definitely vary in shape and size. But the idea of achieving balance through these counterpoints remains the same like a common thread throughout many examples of asymmetrical architecture. One more aspect of asymmetry to consider is its meaning in architecture. Asymmetrical structures can oftentimes be referred to as dynamic compositions, as these buildings produce the ideas and feelings of motion, excitement, and activity. Their unique balance encourages the viewer to explore the building's form in closer detail. In conclusion, asymmetry is a common yet powerful method to evoke emotion when it comes to design in architecture. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the other part in this series, Symmetry in Architecture. I'll link that video here. Thanks so much for watching and with that, I'll see you next week.